Uh oh. 40 isn't back. It's done, gentlemen. The finals are back, I'll tell you that. G'day, I'm James Clements, not to be confused with Lance Whitnell. Hey, <laughs> that's racist. Uh, welcome to the AFL Today Show. I'm your host. It is your new favourite one-stop shop for the all things footy. Joining me for the Midweek Madness Show, even though it's like midweek, but it's like we don't have footy this week, men's footy this week, we've got footy in two weeks. Uh... Our local weirdos, the kids. We're playing the kids. It's, we've got the little stats boy over there. Oh, I've been playing every week. I'm more, more experienced than uh, Leo in the middle there, but I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. And we also have social guy Leo. Jimbo, how are you? <laughs> Chilling, not illin'. Always be thrilling, don't need no penicillin. All right, oh, this is the midweek win- winners and losers show. Uh, I, I love that I term it the midweek losers and winners of the week, of the midweek, of the week, of the losers and the winners. Our week is, is over by Wednesday. We also have a new sticker. We have Yeah Nas, and we are debuting a new segment. We're still road testing the name. Top fives with Wally, which is awesome. <laughs> nice. It is a cracking top five, though, because this top five is like why the season 2024 was one of the cra- well, the craziest season we've ever had. Yeah. So awesome. we go in depth. It's awesome. And the cherry on top of this absolutely awesome AFL Today ice cream sundae. Mm. Jeez, how many times? You're going to be hungry, yeah. 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 Let's stop the show. (laughs) Woo! All right. Uh, It is our all Australian teams because I don't think the selectors get it right ever. I've got some vibes. I've got some thoughts, and so do these two clowns. So, 40 is back in finals form. It's back in finals form. I'm excited. Get pumped. Before we do that, it's the end of the season. What happens then, gentlemen? Man Monday. Mad Monday. Mad Monday. Lots of news. And lots of news. There's a lot going on. News ticker. First and foremost, Michael <laughs> Voss is a, like a goddamn hero. Yep. That was unbelievable. <laughs> just crash tackling two dudes who crashed a car. One had a knife. Just saying, we're winning the flag. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what co- other coaches out there crash tackling hooligans on the streets of Melbourne and then going back to get his coffees? I love it. He's like, oh, I've got to get my coffee. He's telling me Would that. you rather a knife or Michael Voss's guns? I know what I know what I'd rather. He's yeah, very they do brought a knife to a Michael Voss gun fight. Legit. <laughs> yeah, like, legit. Uh, not ideal. <laughs> I do love the idea that we, oh, he performed a citizen's arrest. I didn't realize you could literally actually do that. I thought that I'm was gonna American I'm going to arrest you thing. right now. You're under arrest. <laughs> I think I've got to do something <laughs> for that. I'm, I'm sure you've done plenty. <laughs> and the main streets of Essendon. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. But Michael Voss. So just hanging out. The Blues had four days off after their uh, game against St Kilda. So hanging out in Hawthorne. Getting a coffee. Just hanging out, getting some coffees. And a car flipped. The two dudes ran off and he went, not on my bloody watch. Chased him down, crash tackled him, one had a knife and just, you know, actually arrested the dudes. Mm. Yeah, sick. How many lives did Vossi just save? Well, we, maybe we not, know. but still. <laughs> maybe the, kid, it was no, awesome. maybe the 16-year-old kids, yeah. Seriously, name in. Well, apart from what other finals coach right now? Would you also trust to crash tackle Bevo. bandits? Bevo, Bevo, yeah. John Longmire, but he's pretty big, but I don't know if he's a bit older now. Definitely old. not Hinkley. No. Mm. No, he's, he's not. Hinkley would be agile. like, oh, Koshy, should I go chase him down? <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely Bevo. He's got the same sort of guns as Sam uh, Mitchell might. Sam Mitchell? Yeah. Uh, might be a bit yeah. too nice. I might just take them in for counselling or something. <laughs> nah, I'm going to rebuild you. <laughs> yeah, to, in two years. I'm going to push back on the Bev idea. He might be showing them how to like go faster. Go, go on. Do it, do it, you cowards. <laughs> Bevo's just out there in Yarraville. Just like, go on, hey, do a flip. Oh, they did one sick. <laughs> and they just let them run off on your Bevo. If they've got relation to Tom Morris, Bevo will go after him. <laughs> oh, bang. That is a great call. <laughs> yeah. All right. Matt O's got rubbed out for one week. Uh, he's going to miss the elimination final in Brisbane for my beloved Blues. Uh, I struggle with this one. Same. It's for the simple fact it was a free kick holding the ball. Like so it's a legal tackle mm. on the ground. There was no injury that came of it. It shouldn't have been probably. What though. are we doing? Mm. It's just so inc- I think we'll get into it in Liam the end. Liam Jones has like the suspension mm. overturned. Well, the MRO basically went, oh, no, 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 he's fine. It's a fine. <laughs> Like, what are we doing? Yeah. They were the same all, thing. All yeah. of this is just mm. chaos. Michael Christian has just lost the plot. Like, the entire system. The entire <laughs> system, gentlemen. There we go. Vince says <laughs> ruins. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's burn it down to the ground so Matt always can play in Brisbane. But I – we've, we've yelled about this, like, all season. Oh, all yeah. And right. I just – I'm sick of yelling. I hate yelling about it. I hate yelling about umpires. I hate yelling about commentary. Like, just make it good. It's not hard. Yeah. It's not the world's most complicated brain surgery, you know? Like, I feel like we can get this right and go, what happened on the ground? What was paid? What was the result of the act? 
how did it all get to this? What are the judging parameters? And it seems that it's completely screwed up. If, so. e- if everyone got one week for that tackle for the whole year, it's yep. been different every single time. I think someone got two, someone got one, someone got three, mm. someone got zero. If everyone got one week, you go, all right, then Matt Elliott, Liam Jones, just tick them off for one week. If, if they even both got the same amount of weeks, we probably wouldn't even be talking about exactly. it because we're like, the AFL, mm. at least they know what they're doing. There was very similar tackles, and yeah, they're just all over the shop. I feel like there was also a, uh, there was the dangerous <laughs> tackle that was paid later in that Saints game. The like, yeah. oh, that was a, a bit of a joke anyway of a dangerous tackle mm. because he didn't really dangerously tackle him. Uh, but that doesn't get brought up. And you're like, okay, but that was paid as a, what are we doing here? Like, mm. that is insane. Anyway, uh, as I mentioned, <coughs> Liam Jones gets away with a fine. Cosy Pickett, three-week suspension, um, was, which is what Probably was offered right, yeah. and upheld. Uh, that checks out. That's the Cozzy. second time. Second time he's got suspended at the end of a season as well. So he he loves. He doesn't care about the first. He few just games, he just <laughs> loves an extend off season. Yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> it was for you. He's like, I don't want to go back to work. I'll yeah. just hit this guy in the last <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah. It's the Alistair Lynch protocol. Yeah, I love it. Oh, what are we gonna do next year? I don't know, I'm gonna punch you in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm retiring anyway. Bye. That was the old yeah, the old school thing, wasn't it? Uh, so that's sort of like the the tribunal sort of news. Uh, outside of this, though, we have obviously trade request season. Starting to heat up. Mm. Thick and fast. It's just me or like there's been more requests to clubs before like the season's actually ended than ever before. I, I can agree with that. I like I feel like it always happens the week after fa- the grand final. Yeah. But we've seen so many this week. I think this is – but this is exit interview season as well, mm. right? So this is where they're doing their one-on-ones. You get the delicious. They're doing their one-on-ones. They're hitting their KPIs. <laughs> uh and I think it's just much more reported now. Mm. Yeah, was. true. Because I think this sort of stuff would have been like, oh, he's intimated to us that he wouldn't mind a trade. Mm-hmm. And then like when the trade period actually rolls around after the grand final, it sort of gets pushed out. Oh, yeah, he wants out. Yeah, and then but now uh, it's like, oh, he requested a trade. We need to on. know about it right now. Mm-hmm. I think people are more interested in it. There's like even more podcasts about trades and things like 100%. that compared to other sports have been doing it for years. So you're right about that. So let's start at the top. Tom Barras. <laughs> Wants to trade to the Hawks. Let's go. That is a massive pickup if you get him. Oh, I don't know about massive. I really, really like Tom Brass. You should date him. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> the weapon. Johnny Noble wants to go to the Suns. We love Johnny Noble. To be with his family. Uh, and everyone's like, but he's from Adelaide. It's like, yeah, but he's, he's got, got family a, up he's there. He's got a brother at the Gold Coast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's still family. That's not how and his dad, works, And his dad works in Brisbane. Uh, Daniel Rioli wants out of Richmond, obviously. Uh, is very keen on reuniting with Dimmer at the Gold Coast. I'm interested to see how many players went out of Richmond because it's not looking good there. Nope. And Shea Bolton wants to go to Frio. So, very interesting stuff. Did Baker also just request out or did I not? You may have. That? Possibly, you yeah. better Google it uh, on Google. the internet. Uh, <laughs> my vibe about this, and I think a lot of us are on the same sort of page, I don't like the idea of I want to go to this specific club. No. It's like if you're contracted, sucked in. I think like you signed the you contract. You signed it, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. If you want that locked away money for X amount of time, mm. it is quite <clears> literally <throat> on the club to get the best return for that player. Like I don't care, Leo, if you want to go to like some other organization. If I've got you on the contract. <laughs> don't care, mate. Don't care, What mate. if they offer you two first-round picks? Two first? <laughs> I'm sending you off Who do we get for it? We get Kane Corns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get like some gun social media man like, to be named Get later. the Hawthorne social, social like media admin. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, get the, we get Jacob from GWS. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, mate. Right, yeah. I'll throw in stats, boy, just as <laughs> yeah, yeah, a yeah. bonus. Away we go. But I think, especially when you go, Brass wants to go to Hawks. It's like, Great. If you want to go back to Melbourne, we will send you to Victoria. Mm. Well, yeah, you shouldn't be. We're like, I think we said it before, the AFL players have too much power compared to other sports. Well, you shouldn't be allowed to say it's a specific class. If, funny, if you're under contract. I think if you yeah, need. Yeah, if you're under contract. If you're under contract. Simple. It's funny you guys say this. Liam Baker has requested a trade to WA. Oh, That's good. Okay. He hasn't specified a club. I respect that. That's fine. Liam Baker, good dude. <laughs> uh, and then the other, obviously, the biggest trade news since we did Sunday's show. Uh, which is where your mate Jim was just sitting there turtlenecking the entire game. <laughs> yeah, I felt uh, bad for Live show just was, oh, God, it sucked. <laughs> Christian Petrarca, it came out. Uh, the old doctor's gone the old dog and bone when he was, uh, hmm. you know, undergoing treatment for his grievous internal injuries. And we're like, yeah, hey, uh, you might want to come down here, Chris's, Chris's uh, missus. Because he might like, die. I didn't think it was. I knew we knew it was bad, and we were jokingly like saying, "I remember this part. Oh, he could have died. He actually could have died. Yep. That is unbelievable." Anytime the doctor's like, <laughs> "Look, it's just a, it's up in the air. Like, there's a possibility. That's crazy. 
like, what are we doing here? That's cra- they, they sent him. They sent back him back out, out on the field, yeah. and people are like, oh, he go. He's such a bad bloke for requesting a trade. If our boss here <laughs> tried to kill me, I'd probably go. Yeah, I don't want to work here anymore. Just saying, not great, Bob. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> so, I can understand Petrarca, and the reporting around this has been very. It's been very straightforward, I think, in a way that I don't think it's as straightforward as probably being reported, right? It's like, oh, he requested a trade. I feel like it's much more of like that I'm not entirely convinced of we're going in the right direction. I have a giant amount of money and time left on my contract. I would rather go somewhere else Mm. if that's cool. And that's fine. Melbourne, you keep saying no, no, no. Melbourne, well, within their rights, you go, sucked in. Like retire then if you I don't know see ya. Um, <laughs> I would throw absolutely everything at this if I'm Melbourne just to make sure that he's like cool, yeah, and happy. Especially Max Gorn's w- taking Clayton Oliver with him up to Queensland, right, to get him under his wing, yep. make sure he's not doing things and uh, <laughs> hanging out, right? Yeah, take truck as your chef. Thing is, he can't <laughs> exactly. he, he can't do anything else for another month that gets his heart rate above a hundred. Oh, really? Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. That's so poor. You clearly can't watch Carlton games. It's very, <laughs> it's very clear that Petrarca wants out. Yeah, and there's like, sort of avenues for that to happen. Are we convinced it does happen? Ooh. what do you, you have to give up a lot, don't no, you? No, I don't yeah. think so. Melbourne aren't going to agree to it. The only way it could happen is that uh, grievance option, which I uh, yeah, so saw this there morning, is a grievance option where he where could say you go Melbourne. to the players' association yeah. and uh, go, they have mistreated me and my yeah the way that I was treated after my injury and stuff like that, and I have a legitimate grievance with this club, yeah. and I want out. And People think that he could be the first AFL player to ever use that. It's a nuclear option. Yes. But I have I think it's just this the thing that's building up, similar to Jack Viney, similar to Clayton Oliver, and then they'll sort it out. No one is going to offer them enough. Like, you have to offer a Who lot. Has He's the, a freak. Exactly. Frio have the, have the picks, but they've got... They want players Bolton. they want to bring Yeah, in. so I don't think it's going to happen. Who's got the Arsenal to bring him in? Like North, but no. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I think Richmond aren't going to go pick one for truck. What's up? Yeah, did, did no, he he's say too old. He's too he old. wants to play in front of bigger crowds or have I just read a Twitter comment? Like? I think you've just read a Twitter comment there. Because <laughs> okay. I think, I but don't he, know if... I would if I was. Probably as, if I was as credible as some journalists. So, he, so, he, <laughs> so he's not going to North. Okay, we get it. No, I didn't say he was. Uh, yeah. But it's like you look at someone like a team like Hawthorne on the rise. Like that's the sort of team where you go, is he too old for you? Like uh, you yeah. look at a team like the Western Bulldogs probably don't need a truck. Mm. Like... Carlton could probably use St. one Kilda. more player like that. St. Kilda could definitely yeah. use a truck. Uh, they're uh, in like the Geelong, sort of right yeah. age yeah, range Geelong, as well. The that's Saints. scary. Geelong. Geelong, yeah. Geelong would be hilarious. That Geelong would end up with Petrarca, Oliver, and Bailey Smith. No, okay. not Oliver's not going there. <laughs> anyway. It's done, mate. <laughs> it's done. So Petrarca, look, we'll obviously be talking about this plenty uh, wild, throughout yeah. this final series and into the offseason. Yeah. So yep. this is where it all sort of starts. Uh, the exit interviews, he had told teammates that he was like, I'm not entirely sure if I want to stick around. And then it sort of got broken mm. wide into the group. So we'll see what happens. Outside of that, the schedule of the finals. Now, we talked about oh. this on Sunday night's program. Yes. Program. I like that. That sound, sounds very official, doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> this is the Sunday night. Program. Channel 31. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sunday Night Program where we're <laughs> talking <laughs> AFL Today with AFL Today's experts. Uh, <laughs> the final series. The Sydney chairman came out and was like, what's the reward for being the minor premier here? Like, this stinks. Like, we get stuck. Stuck. The Saturday afternoon game at the SCG against GWS. Ah. I am still wildly just like, how have they screwed this up so badly mm. where the Western Bulldogs play on the Friday night? When against, they asked not to, yeah. When they asked specifically yeah. not to with Hawthorne. Uh <clears throat> To not play that night because it is their opening game of the AFLW season. New facilities, yeah. At the Witten Oval, mm-hmm. which is huge for that entire. And look, this is the one time you can actually say footy club. I hate AFL media. So, oh yeah, it's, it was a really good showing today by the by the Melbourne Footy Club. So, like the, the team that's <laughs> yeah. out there, like the chairman wasn't out there yeah. putting in the hard yards. Exactly. Like, what are we doing? But this is a big thing for a football club, like mm. as a whole. AFLW, if you want to put a shine on this, then let your supporters go to They've it. They've really stuffed that up. And the AFL went out and, you know, pulled out the big guns. 
the really erudite, well-spoken, incredibly engaging CEO, Andrew Gillen Dillon. Don't forget handsome. With a $20 <laughs> haircut as a, like, what are we doing? He's running a multi-billion dollar corporation, and he's got the haircut that looks like Stats Boy gave it to him. Whoa. I, I'm a good To be honest, you've got the exact same haircut. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I didn't need a haircut. You might get the same part. I don't have as long as him, but I, need, I definitely need a haircut. But it was shocking him <laughs> going on Fox Footy and how bad he spoke and how he basically tried to defend the AFL stance on this. It was like this weird, wildly, like as a lawyer, you're like, how is this guy, why was he a successful lawyer? Yeah, I don't understand He that. stinks. He's he, a horrible talker. He looked talker. nervous. He looked nervous. He was absolutely bottling it. I am just, and he, like, his explanations of it made very little sense apart from, uh, Broadcast dollars. To be fair, when people are like that was it, and then he looks surprised. Yeah. He's like, oh, and they we and like he just like sort of passing the buck. Well, our fixture break it down. It's yeah. all this. Like then we spoke to these things. It's about the broadcast partners, what the teams wanted. It's like the teams were like none of us wanted any of these games no. basically, apart from maybe Port Geelong might be happy with the Thursday night game. Yeah, but outside of that, I think the biggest thing for me is like how are you rewarding the top four by going well. If you finish top four, finish top one and four for Sydney and GWS, you're playing on the Saturday. If whoever loses then has like a slightly less gap than like the next sort of round, this sort of thing, just play the first four, like the top two, well, the top four teams play those first two dates. Simple as that, I feel like. Mm. To then give them more advantage down the track for a little bit more rest for the team that loses rather than like playing on a shorter week. So it's a dog's breakfast. I look at this entire schedule and I'm like, how – I think Port and Geelong is fine on the Thursday. Then the next three games are just wrong. I don't mind. It's just wrong. GWS on a Saturday, for example, they're going to make. It's about money, I think. Like Friday night, Bulldogs Hawthorne, probably going to be a massive, massive crowd at the G. You're going to make more. More people are going to be watching it because there's two Melbourne teams. I think that's their theory on that. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. I didn't. Did Andrew Dillon say that? Is he? Has he gone? What he says, well, when there's 90,000 people there on Friday night, then we'll <laughs> know that it was a success. Well, and yeah. it's like, it's there's like going to be 90,000 90, there yeah. on the Saturday I'll give you afternoon. That. I, think it's come back to, I think it comes back to the TV because Sydney Giants Saturday during the day is, is fine. Like there'll be less people watching it on a Friday night, I think. But anyway. I feel then, like. Then Bulldogs Hawthorne. Bulldogs Hawthorne would have smashed the TV ratings on the Saturday night, the Saturday afternoon. No Might have anyway, yeah. It's just ridiculous. Mm. They screwed the pooch. Yep. And I feel like Sydney have an actual leg to stand on, like, behind. We finished first. Like, we're playing Sale yeah. Arvo. And so if we say they lose to GWS, which is a distinct possibility, with GWS having beaten them in the three times they've played before in finals, they then have to turn around and they'll play again at home, mm -hmm. though. But, like, on probably – They'll probably so they'll play the winner of where's the bracket? Quick. Be Carlton Brisbane. Carlton Brisbane, who play right yes. at the same time, right? Yeah. There's, so there, there's no no advantage, right? Like whereas you feel like if they had the day extra, like that's a little bit more advantage of being yeah. the top finisher, perhaps. Anyway, it sucks. What are you doing? Yeah. Just ask the you know vice president of common sense. Me, I'll figure it out for you. Right, midweek winner, winner and loser of the week. I keep saying midweek winner and winner loser of the week. It's bizarre. <laughs> it's a new segment. Linner, loser. Linner. loser, Melbourne. Yeah, easily. You could have that every week. The last <laughs> six weeks, the the truck, uh, it's just like oh, I want out, and Petr Melbourne is just like, come on, man. Ah. Like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Shh. If they made finals, this could have been a different story. Could be like, oh, I might stay, but yeah. So Not each year, moment. there's a team that has the year from hell, and yeah. Melbourne were that team this year where it all just went completely yep. sideways on them from being an idealized con contender to just outside the eight, looking in, stinking. Petrarca gets wiped out. Oliver mm. stinks all year. Gorn gets hurt at one point. It's just all upside down. Everything right? was just went horrible. And now this, it's just like the final kick in the guts at the end of the season. We're like, oh. Our best player might be gone. And every Demons fan is just like, come on, man. Mm. Like They've now got to sit through like another six weeks of this basically, right? They haven't like progressed from that. Dot, we, we thought when they won it, was it in COVID 2020, their premiership? We thought, all right, they're going to be a bit of dominant here because their midfield was the best in the comp. 2021, was it? Um, yeah, the midfield was the best in the comp. You had a, Everything was sort of working. 2022, they start 10 and 0. Yeah, 10 and 0, exactly. And then they just have only won that one premiership and it was an asterisk on it anyway because it was in COVID. So, yeah, bit of a worry. Most deaf. Uh, <laughs> midweek winner, it's obviously Michael Voss. Oh, Voss is just like, oh, I yeah. took down. And anyone at the guys. coffee shop who saw it happen. Nice. All right. Before we get to the top five with Wally, let's do some yeah nahs. These are good ones. These have been all sent in. Uh, we've got some good ones. Do we need an all-Australian squad before the official team? Yeah, nah. Nah, I put this one in. 
It's just cr- yeah. it's good for us on a show, but it's so unnecessary. It's content. Yeah, it is good for content. Give, give me the slot. <laughs> give me the slot. It just creates unnecessary arguments. Exactly. <laughs> what do you mean? It's <laughs> necessary. It's the, per- the completely <laughs> necessary stats boy. <laughs> Who was snubbed? He's not going to make it. It's perfect it is slop. Fun, it's it- the best sort of slop. It's like, I can't believe Rowan Marshall didn't make the Australian squad. All right. Why is Harry Mackay there? Like, just, you get three, four days of just screaming about this. And I'm all about it. I, I like don't it. mind the debates on it then. I got to follow But I still think it should be first and second team. That's my point. Oh, there we go. I, first, like I really like that because same as like uh, American sports. The other one I was going to ask on that, if you've got into the uh, All-Australian squad but not the All-Australian team, should it be listed in your accolades? I think not. That's no. why it should. That's why, that's why it annoys NBA, me. So yeah. All-NBA, that's why it works really well. Because you, you get yeah, first and second first, team. First, second yeah. team, stuff like that. I like and that. Like that Basketball is easy for that because you've got 15 players. Yes. Like total. Like that's the best. It's a bit team. harder when you've got 22. Like, yeah. I think... 22, though, you can easily go through this comp and go, here are the best 44 players. It's the first and the second yeah. team. And if you're a second team All-Australian, that's awesome. Mm. Like that's Whereas, like, if you're on the squad, nothing, like... It shouldn't go on your accolades. I nothing goes that. on your accolades. Yeah. Well, it's it does like, on some sites. I made the squad. Yeah. I it didn't does make the team. On like, the squad yeah, well, on the AFL website. I don't yeah. know. I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I would argue first and second team All-Australian out of like that, that squad. Yeah. And then you can still argue who makes first and second, see? Mm-hmm. Whereas now we've just got a players, bunch of dudes who just miss out. Less players miss out. That's yeah. weird. It's true. All right. Uh, was Rowan Marshall the biggest snub? We'll talk about this again later. Yes, I think so. I think I think yeah. he was. He, he at least be in the squad, but he was never going to make. Listening to Nathan Buckley talk about it as well, I was like, I don't think Bucks has watched the Saints play. Didn't, this really? Buckley, he's usually pretty smart. Was it Bucks. Buckley that said something about Cam Rayner had a bad end to the year, but a good start to so the it year? It was the opposite. It was the yeah. exact same thing he said about Rowan Marshall, where yeah. he's like, oh, yeah, he sort of tailed off towards the end. He was like, he was unbelievable. He was unreal <laughs> in the back half of the season. What are you talking <laughs> about? Come on, Bucks. Bucks, you had, is he your t- forehead just keeps turning into a five head and it's getting weird. Has he been talking to Malthouse a bit, maybe. bit too much, maybe? Uh, why is the MRO like, MR still extremely inconsistent? Can we fix this? Yeah, that's yeah, a big no. yeah. Uh, can we fix? Yeah. I think uh, I think it was Jordan Lewis. I've mentioned this the last couple of weeks. We just need to have a thing that says, all right, dangerous tackle. That's not that's rough conduct or whatever they say. One week. Just have a thing that literally – I don't think we even have like a, a list that the media or that the fans can see where you go a bad tackle is one week or a punch to the ribs is a fine. Or yeah. We don't even have that they, written down. They do. They write it down, but it's under – yeah, as you said, like it's rough like too conduct. Many, too many like different – Medium points. impact, low yeah. impact. Like It's too for hard. For instance, the – Always one was medium impact. The Jones one is low impact. Wow. How is the, eight, always, ti- fan. always is tiny and Jones is yeah. massive. Yeah. To an how is that fan, medium? you're like, how am I supposed to know that? What, like, what, what is the difference in the medium to low impact? So, yeah, I, I, so, yeah to answer the end, like, yeah, they can fix it. They just need to just sit down, and just be smart about it instead of being so broad. It's way too broad at the it's moment. It's very obtuse in the moment. Obtuse, mm-hmm. yeah. We need more clarity. Good word. Will Petrarca be the Demons in 2025? <laughs> I'm going to say no. Oh. You convinced me with your little speech before. <laughs> with your little speech. I'm going, yeah, just I don't think. Uh, I don't know where he'll be, though. I, that's the thing that is probably. Where, 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 where do you think? If I don't know. Oh, you know Any, just off the top of your head. Uh, no, I'll, I'll say he will. I think they'll figure something out. There's, yeah. I Falling think. On. I don't know if anyone can match their asking mm. price. So but I'm then he could bring say, out that grievance thing. He could. But I feel like they'll try to patch this over. They'll try. And they'll fail. He's not going to be oh, a demon next year. Line. Boom. <laughs> uh, if the Blues hadn't made the finals, would Michael Voss have been sacked? Nah. Yeah, nah. No. Nah. No. Nah. No, Especially after tackling someone. This is the <laughs> Brett, yeah, lots of injuries. The yeah. Brett Ratton corollary where Carlton did sack Brett Ratton at the end of 2012, something like that. When you were really good. Yeah. Uh, they'd made the finals prior year, then got absolutely poleaxed by injuries following that, mm. and then went, oh, there's Mick Moldhouse. Let's go get him. That, that was so bad. And uh, that was, I don't know. Uh, the wrong move. That's right. <laughs> uh, because he was cooked and old and just lost his marbles. Uh, all like basically, he'd hit a point where, especially I think when coaches, like, you hit an age, it's like, this is my game plan. This is how we play footy. And then the game moves at such a pace that if you can't adapt, you're cooked. And Maltels was cooked. Yeah. And Voss, I think, is at least proven at times when he's got a half decent list. I think there is a little bit too much tinkering, which I think sort of submarine this season, but I don't know if he was behind uh, the, compit- the, downfall, the capitulation yeah. and the downfall mm. of this team. I'll give you that. It was, and I, well, at least I don't know if there's enough evidence. Like yeah. it was pointing in that direction. 
But I don't know. What, yeah, if you don't fight. make finals next year, then that could yeah, be. Yeah, if they had to miss finals this year and missed out next year, he's gone. He's gone, definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyway. The actually, I actually want to check the dates on those uh, Brett Ratton ones. So, yeah, he was replaced in 2012. 2012, and okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they'd made the finals the prior year, then got caned by injuries. And it's like absolute hiding the nothing, club league. He's a good coach, I reckon. And I feel like he, ha- he had the makings of a good coach and they didn't let it settle. Yeah. In classic Carlton form. Yeah. Uh, should the Clarko experiment at North be put out of its misery, stats boy? Oh, yeah, nah. I was there on the weekend. I'll say you nah. Know, you I'm know where s- I sit on this one. I know, but you said it all year. And then we started going around. You're like, oh, I don't know. And now everyone's sort of jumping on the bandwagon and get Clarko out. I'll say no. Nah. I think he's not Who else not are they going to get? Exactly. Like, Who else are we going to get for starters? Get? And I think there was about eight games in there where I'm like, oh, we look like a decent footy side. How can you say that every year, I, North I, fans? I know I've said that every year. I'm not. I still am not happy There's with this. There's so much to. Need I think to the be, game plan is good. I think the people he picks are wrong. I still yeah. don't know about the game plan because Clarko mm. at Hawthorne was very kick mark. We're precision precision kick. But we here. can't. We can't hit a time. Yeah, you can't. Hit, that's <laughs> the problem. So if you actually get the players, which you don't have in the first place, if you get the players. Then I don't even know if the game plan's going to work for you guys. I, I thought that I was going to come onto this show after the week and not have to talk about North anymore, so I am done. No, this is the entire <laughs> thing this week. We're looking back at the season. I know, the world, I know. Right? I'm just joking. Uh, I'll say no. Nah. I'm going to say no nah because they can't afford to. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. They can't afford to pay but out but if we could, else, That might like, kill the club. <laughs> hypothetically, you, you would get rid of him if we could. Hypothetically, I'd be like, I think – this is what I literally just said about coaches, right? I think there's ways that you coach and there's mm. ways that you the see progresses. the game. It's weird to me that Clarko seemed like one of those sort of guys who'd be like seeking out mm. different ideas, different ways of coaching, and then seemingly hasn't implemented them. Mm. Which is like, oh, I'm going to learn from Steve Kerr in the NBA, and then learn nothing. I think I think he's just he gone from it. such good players, which I think would happen to a lot of coaches, well, and now he's just dealing with some. I know we've got our young guns, but other than that, at the back half of Hawthorne, he didn't have some good players. That's true. I mean, he kept persisting with a few ideas that true. Well, like Clarko, that's. Outdated, past, right? Mate. Yeah. Is yeah. what happens to coaches. Yeah. Uh, does Mad Monday need a makeover? Not as much chaos. This as is you. from Bob's uh, Bob's Bob. That was that was one good of Bob's one. is Bob. We haven't really seen as much. That was Geelong a few years ago. Really good. I, I, Geelong I do also will do it when they're true. But I'm just saying, like, I also feel like a lot of the clubs have learned. The like, only we're just doing a barbie or they, at a mate's house, or they're like in a, an enclosed pub with like yeah. blinds down. The only <laughs> club I saw photos of was Adelaide. Of that was pretty clubs. cool. All they the, uh, the go- blinds, the golf clubs, but Obviously, they, they should yeah. be the one club that shouldn't do it after the last. They should never do anything <laughs> ever. They, are they having fun? Joshua Shelley's like, am I? Am I allowed to come? Am yeah. I allowed to dress up? <laughs> <laughs> they're dressed as Peaky Blinders because they're going to kill some. People. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> but yeah, there hasn't been as much chaos, which is a bit sad. Uh all right, two last ones here. Can the Hawks win the flag this year? For the Hawks fans <sighs> out there, they're in seventh. Leo. Can they win a Leo? What do you reckon? Unfortunately not. Okay. No, I, don't think so. oh. I, I just think every week has been an elimination final and that will eventually take a toll. Like you can't, every mm. game you have to get up to win. So like you have to do that four more times. It's, People it's compare so it to tough. the Dogs and the Dogs didn't have a home. They weren't in Victoria the for their run. So. I, the, they sort of have a sneaky chance, but I'm going to say no as well. I think the dogs are going to beat them in the first week. I think there's some holes in that Hawthorne team mm. that they've played. Tom Russell, Phil. They've played, hey. they've played so well that it's sort of covered over them. And I feel like once you get to that, if you know, get if they get past the dogs, I think that second or third mm. week might just be a little bit too much. Can we uh, trade in Barras before finals? He's already Maybe. requested the trade. Let's do it. <laughs> that, that would be nuts. I don't mind this idea. If, no. you're eliminated, <laughs> if your team is eliminated, the existing teams get to select yeah, like one player each. That everyone, would be so cool. We get like it. everyone requesting trades because they just want to play finals. Yeah, Carlton is like, uh, can we? We'll take a uh, ooh, send our back. Jordan Dawson. Normally Tom Barras. It's like Jordan, Jordan Dawson. Dawson. Yeah. It's like, off you go. You know, just someone like that. Noah Anderson, as long as we play in the Gold Coast. We're, we're actually playing up north. We're playing about the 20 <laughs> parallel. Get no Let's go. We'll have the whole Gold Coast team. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, and then finally, did the AFL nail the first week of finals fixture? Yeah, nah, nah. I think, yes. I think they've cooked. I think it wasn't as bad as everyone's saying, yeah. but I'll say nah. I'll say nah. They didn't nail Sydney it. Sydney GWS should be the Friday night. I don't I like the Dogs. Sale Arvo yeah. should be Dogs, Hawks, and then I think... The Saturday night could still be Brisbane Carlton, or you could switch that. With, I, uh, the Saturday Arvo. I just think if it was that way, we would have the same amount of people, different people, up in arms about like, 
oh, well, if dogs win, they only get a six-day break and stuff like like something. That's like what when, you get for finishing but the, sixth. The but, AFL, it, but my point is, like, no one's going to be happy. So the, whatever the AFL did, I think it would have been mm. the exact same uproar. So, so it would disadvantage the teams that finish first and fourth. It's just, it's weird. I don't know if disadvantage is the right word. One day, they're professional athletes. But well, I know, yeah, I know what you're saying. Well, it's not even disadvantage. It's not rewarding them for yeah. finishing top of the ladder. Yeah. No, they I, get two home finals and a second double chance. Sure. But at the same time, <laughs> you don't get, like, your exact – well, and even – there's nothing obviously set in stone about what you can and can't mm. get, but at least, at least probably help them out a little bit. I yeah, think. I think first especially should. Or do they just like chuck that. them like 50 bucks or something? I still reckon the Thursday <laughs> and Friday bucks. should be the top four games and then Saturday is your next four. And go yeah, that, honestly, it's a fair we just have Super Saturday every game at 4 p.m.? To be honest. I would love that. <laughs> the AFL would hate it, but we would love yeah. that. All right, that's a good chat. Uh, let's go to the top five with Wally and then come back with some all-Australian chat right after this. All right, now it's time for an awesome new segment. Now, I've been throwing around some ideas, gentlemen, for this, this name. Just hear me out. <laughs> top fives <laughs> with Wally. What do you reckon? Are we, are we good? Because <laughs> we've got Wally on for this exact segment to talk out some top fives because, look, there's nothing more than my stupid, simple brain loves than a list. <laughs> it's just a list. Like, go back to 2012. You know where I wanted to work more than anything else ever in the world? BuzzFeed. <laughs> I'm like, let's go BuzzFeed. I'm going to list everything in my yeah. life. I actually went for two different jobs at BuzzFeed at two different, like, second interviews. Never got a gig. Blow it out your nose. <laughs> anyway, let's do it. So top five, Wally, which one is this one? What are we going to do for this week off in between finals, between footy? Yeah. We want to look back at the season that was. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I think what we're going to do here is we're going to look. This has been the most insane season there's ever been yeah. in, in my memory. So I wanted to talk about the top five reasons that uh, 2024 was the craziest season we've seen. All right. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, but there is a lot here. Do you know what? Going through and writing this down, I'm like, this is actually nuts. And taking, like, what I remembered in my very small brain <laughs> and combining that with the actual stats over the year, you yeah. start putting it together and go, oh, my God, this this is crazy. <laughs> So, so good. look, I'm obviously a Hawks fan. It's written all over on my face and on my head, obviously, but I'm going to keep this non-biased. Okay. I will keep it non-biased. So we'll start with the Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> so the first, number five, I've put them at five. Number five in my top five reason why it's the craziest season. Yeah. The Hawthorne Football Club started at zero and five. They then made their way somehow to three and seven with a percentage of 76. They then went on an 11-2 and two run with a percentage of 160 and have made the finals. Ah. We were triple figures to make the eight. Any price you want to win the flag. Yeah. Like, any team could have been the example. But for starters, a team that's 0-5 and five and was touted by everyone to pretty much win the spoon or be bottom three to come and now play finals and people are saying could actually make a run. Who I are think these people? Who are these th people? This is uh, – Wally. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so I, that, the first thing is what Hawthorne has done this year, I think, makes the season nuts. I don't think it could have happened any other year. So the funniest thing is we were there the day that Hawthorne went one and six when they got belted by 90. Yeah, the that absolute was. absolute nadir of the season, yeah. getting oh. deleted by Sydney. Like, it was gross football. We were just they like, looked this disinterested. Seems... It was over. Pack her up, boys. Your season's mm. done. Smash cut, they're ruining Carlton season. It's like it's like SpongeBob Swimmer a few moments later. Like, I'm like, oh, come on, man. What the hell? And 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 the whole thing with that is that then that's where we start to see Sydney and everyone's yeah. oh, they are like yeah. ruthless. And Isaac Heaney's got 18 votes or whatever it was at this stage for yeah. the Brown. All right. Number four. And I don't I, I look back, I couldn't find something like this happening before. From round 12, so the halfway point, mm -hmm. 10 different teams sat in the top four at any one time. Four. 10. Here's the, and then out of those 10 teams, four of them didn't even make the eight. <laughs> so so it's, Carlton, it's Essendon, nuts. Collingwood, Freo. and Freo. Freo. Wow. That's wild. It's That's crazy. Unreal. So, so it, I had something similar to that on mine. Yeah. The top four at the end of round five, not the same order. But is the top four at season's end? Oh, that's pretty cool. That is very cool. How about this one? Yeah. In number eight, yeah. number eight on the ladder, 34 straight weeks came to an end this week of having different teams at eight. Oh, really? When Carlton went back to back. What there you go. Carlton? 34 straight weeks. Coming here with stats. And I'm the new stats man. They're Check in this and out, yeah. Carlton. All right. 
number three. Okay, so top five reasons. Number three, look, the final day of footy. AFL had yeah. fixturing issues, umpiring oh. issues, MR and tribunal issues, and then they fluke this brilliant <laughs> last day where all the crazy results over the last few weeks end up with these three games which perfectly timed into each other and then St Kilda doing everyone a favour to make the last game relevant and then Carlton gets saved in the end yeah. anyway. So it was quite incredible. For me, the final day just rounded out what a nut season The was. AFL fluked that because the GWS Dogs game was in Ballarat. If it was at Marvel, it was a 1,000% the Friday night game. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I think you say final day of the season. I call it the final turtlenecking day of the season. <laughs> Where I just had a turtleneck running the entire day, just going, oh, this sucks. This sucks. Would have been horrible. Peter McGush just going, I hate everything. My kids are just like, who's the angry red-headed dude in our house? I'm like, oh, it's your dad. G'day, boy. Get out of here, buddy. Oh, I'll tell you what. Anyway, but it was just grumpy gym all day. Hated every second. But- you know, I've got a very cool, calm exterior. That's how I roll. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, how, that's why I yeah. just laughed off camera. <laughs> but seriously, it sucked. Like, it some... was amazing, but it's because I was so invested. Mm. You know what? You don't get that feeling. Riding those tenter hooks of mm. despair yeah. and triumph. It sucked, but it ruled. So I'll pay that. S- seeing Jack Higgins kick that goal and being in the room with you was pretty funny because you just started laughing. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Was always that was insane. It. And then I love that Jack said after the game, I hope they make the eight. It yeah. was like ruthless. I absolutely <laughs> love that. All right, number two on my top five reasons why 2024 was the craziest season ever. I've never seen more games where teams that have nothing to play for beat the teams that have everything to play for. We spoke about St Kilda being the latest example of that. But look, a great example of this the Bombers. <laughs> the Bombers are flying. They're in the top four. Then they lose to the Crows, the Saints, and the Suns, who had nothing to play for at that point. None of them were playing finals. And funnily enough, like the Suns run. Yeah. When the Suns finally beat the run, it was – and can we just appreciate the Suns, how bad the away run was, losing, but how good the comments that it gave us from Dimmer – so much so that Andrew Dillon just gave him a pass. He didn't even. There wasn't even a warning. It was just like, "Yep, that's fine. Yep, that, I think just that's Dillon's the sentiment." Now afraid of him. Oh, yeah, that's mate, how it works. brilliant. So I, I just found this year that we we just saw it over and over and over, and it took ending someone else's season when your season didn't matter after you'd already lost to North on the road so to actually break that streak. I love this because this is one of those things where uh, this is rife in other sports. Like back in my day, you know, oh, footy was tougher. It was harder. Yeah. We're hard men. We're hard. They would have one hundred percent already been in Bali. Yeah, like yeah. they're already on the end of season trip. Like, like from round eighteen onwards, right? Mm. Like, no one cares. They're out. Like, these are just smashings. It's like a gentleman's agreement in nineteen eighty nine. Mm. It's like, right, boys, no injuries. We're all gonna go jump on Jacko's Ute <laughs> after this and like fang to the pub. She'll be right. <laughs> now you've got the Saints going. Don't care. Got to beat Carlton. <laughs> it's round twenty four. <laughs> Who cares? Shut up, Jack Higgins. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they beat them. It's insane. Yeah, but that's also a Ross Lyon thing because it's just Ross oh. just negging his team all through the week. You aren't good enough to beat this team. What oh, are you no. talking about? Whereas Adelaide, you're like, oh, yeah, this kid who has a personality, he sucks. And then yeah. they just don't turn Stupid up and try and tackle Adelaide. anyone. Well, Ross came out and said, he goes, we're going to end some seasons, right? Yeah. We're going to cause some problems. And good on him, he did. He Maybe they in- should do that at the start of the year, though. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not yeah. The when they're out of contention. Just saying. You know Enjoy what? 12th Saints fans. Enjoy 12th. <laughs> it's a lot better ending seasons when you're in the fall. Yeah. yeah. It, it really is. All right. And the last reason, the number one reason why this season was the craziest ever, because it was. It's that simple. <laughs> it was. I've never seen so many twists, so many turns. Picking the top four with any confidence was useless. Ladder predictors went out the window after a single game after you put them through. Yep. On top of that, the teams that sat second, third, and fourth after round 18, round 18, finished eighth, 10th, and 11th. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that does not happen. Oh, and the reigning premiers missed as well. So Hate I, to say it, by the way. Yeah. Don't we all? So it's just, for me, it was inc- it was an incredible season and it sets up for one of the great final series and I can't wait. I love that. Yeah. So I think when you say the, uh, how the, how close and how quite literally insane it was, like I think we talked this out on the show, I think 1997 was the last time yep. it, it had been basically this close, this late. And uh, even then, this had blown it out of the water. So. And it took to three games left in the season for a team to be finally confirmed in the eight. In the eight, mm. let alone anything else. Yeah. 
But I mean, I think this is one <laughs> of my nuts, isn't it? one of my biggest points is like literally that. So this is the flattest season ever, basically, yeah. where the top eight's not settled until literally the fourth quarter of the last game, and that entire last round and the finals were influenced by mm. like four or five different things throughout the season. That when you look back at it, it's absolutely chaotic, right? You've got Carlton bottling it to Adelaide at Marvel, yep, out of absolutely nowhere, give up the ghost, Barry kicks the goal. Collingwood beating Carlton twice, one on the Dacos kick, me sitting directly behind a gun. Oh, God damn. <laughs> the Pies, however, beating the Roos without getting a 50. Oh, the Pies then nuts. losing to Sydney without getting mm. a 50. The Blues beating Frio at Gatherham with two free kicks. Frio giving up the ghost to Essendon and losing their last three games four. prior. Well, they lost their four straight, but the three games prior to that by its combined 21 points. Essendon giving up the ghost to Gold Coast and Essendon to bring it all back, bottling it to Adelaide at Marvel. Yep. <laughs> it's like you combine those sort of things and you have basically one through ten is completely yep. changed by all of that. It's bonkers and I love it. Another one, unless I want to throw it to Alex. I've got one that just stands out, which is the craziest season ever. Richmond beat Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great day. Richmond beat Sydney. Yeah. Richmond <laughs> beat Sydney. The one, best team we've seen in 150 wins. years lost to a team that had two wins all season, yeah. one of which won the minor premiership. I was there. <laughs> what yeah. are we doing? It was great. You know the wooden spooners? They don't tend to beat the team on top of the ladder. That's what happens because they're usually quite bad. If you go back through the years, the last bunch of wooden spoons, what's it been? It's been north. North, north, west coast, like all this – Whoa, Harley Reid, and away we go. Like, they don't beat top of the ladder. That's just, like, in my brain, I'm just going to remember, hey, Jim, what happened in 2024? I'm like, well, Richmond beat Sydney. <laughs> I tried to explain this to my five-year-old. He's like, he's, he's like the skin, scene from Scanners. Yeah. His head nearly exploded. He's like, that doesn't compute, Dad. I'm like, it doesn't because Richmond beat Sydney. Richmond are bad. Sydney are good. That was weird. <laughs> this is the craziest season ever. I'll tell you what, on top of that, Hawthorne, Yep. Finishing above the Blues. If you had said that last year, oh, Blues no. make, the, make a prelim. Hawthorne, they could make finals. Ball, mm. Blues completely falling apart. Away we yep. go. Um, I've got two other coaching related ones. Alex, you go. i got Joel and Marty kicking nine, and it's the highest individual goals, goal uh, tally in the year. Like, Jezza kicked nine against West Coast, but Joel and Marty kicked nine and should have had a chance to kick ten, but Longmire took him off. What a count. Know, I reckon Longmire's gone, do you know what, mate? You shouldn't have kicked nine. You're not a you're not a ten goal goal kicker. <laughs> and we know that. I've got too much respect for the game. You're coming out because I cannot have Joel and Marty with 10 next to his name. I, I think Horse might have kicked 10 <laughs> once himself. So he's like, mate. <laughs> Roger Mays. Yeah, that, it's so weird because he hasn't gotten anywhere near it for yeah, the rest like of the year. Josh Bruce or whatever his name was, he used to play for the Western yeah, Bulldogs, yeah, kicked Josh 10 Bruce. against North yep. Melbourne. Like He's not a 10-goal game dude. Tex no. Walker is a 10-goal game dude. He yeah. kicked 10 last against year, right? Charlie, yeah. Charlie nice. did it. Charlie did it. Joel and Marty, a Marty party, not a 10-goal game Jez has never kicked 10. That's amazing. I love that. The, Amar the Amarty game was a lot of that fun. That was great. Though. It was so much fun to watch. You got and, some more? And then they also had the nearly reoccurring nightmare when he took three grabs early on Saturday night. It was like, oh, it's going to happen again. <laughs> um, yeah, Gold Coast beat Geelong by 64 points in a game that had oh. 264 points scored. In the Northern Territory. It was sick. Yeah, that was nuts. Like, We've met, we all memory hold that game. Yeah. Right? Every, everyone had 40 it. possessions. Yeah. The coaches kicked goals 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 kick sick. five. And it made no sense because it was it would have been like it would have been really dewy underfoot. Yeah. It would have been slippery ball. The, like the, the stats after the game and the conditions you were looking at and the teams on the park, none of it made any sense. No. I'd like to thank Tom Stewart for getting me paid that game. He got two very cheap disposals <laughs> right at the end to get to 20. <laughs> yeah. You legend. Uh what else you got? The final one I've got because we already had the top four in round five was the top four at season's end, the Hawks zero and five finals. West Coast smashed Melbourne. Oh, yeah, they did. They did. That was with Max, like there. Like it wasn't like no Max, no Petrarca, no Oliver. It was just, yeah, they just got smashed by like yeah, 40 points. Yeah, they did too. Killed him. Absolutely killed yeah. him. Uh, I've got a couple of other ones. Ken Hingley was actually fired in round 15 <laughs> yeah. and finished second on the ladder. Yeah. Yep. That's pretty crazy. Like- Port fans are like, never tear us. We're going to kill that guy. He's a dead man. I want nothing to do with Ken. It's like, whoa, never tear us apart until you go like, what? What? what I think it was what, round If they 15, didn't beat St. Kilda. They lost that. three in the trot. They yeah. pull one out of their noses, 62-60 over Saints. And he saves his job. And they finish mm. second in the, on the ladder. Incredible gear. 
Bevo got fired when the dogs were three oh, and yeah. five. Yeah, that was a good time. They then spent the rest of the season no more than a game around 500. Yeah. Until they got to round 17 when they were eight and eight yeah. and just didn't lose again. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they went, what did they, they, they beat? They lost one more. They beat Geelong and Geelong. They beat Sydney and Sydney and they smacked Carlton. It was like, they're good. Then they yep. finished in sixth. They famously won the flag from seventh back in yep. 2016. Like, Bevo is just like, oh, just you could Bevo coach. He's like, just check this here, Bush. I'll coach, I'll coach him up good. <laughs> if he goes, he might just Smart. win another flag. Yep. Uh, and then my favorite though, the craziest season all year, Kane Corns gets a new gig over at Channel 7. Good on you, Kane. We're all very proud of you. Uh he has spent quite literally all year just saying the most insane, dumbest stuff you could possibly imagine, only to be pipped at the post by Caroline Wilson oh, going. You stole my line. Uh I don't know if Jared Schofield should be the coach of the West Coast Eagles because he's got tattoos. Like an entire season worth of amazing material <laughs> yeah. from Kane Corns negated by Caroline Wilson just saying the world's most insane thing <laughs> ever. Yeah. He's got tattoos, he can't coach. It's like, what? It's yeah. Are you yelling about you weird old lady? That don't, don't what? It is literally the That's weird. insane. It's literally the weird old lady going, oh, I shouldn't hire him. He's got tattoos. I can't trust him with the sleeve. She like put away the money in the bicky tin. When yeah. <laughs> what are we doing, Caroline? That is insane. She clutched her purse Kane really Corns hard. Kane just like jaw would have dropped. It like that is a great take. <laughs> oh, how did I miss that? He just left that one completely on the floor. Anyway, that's been a great top five. Thank you, Wally. All right, how good was that top five with Wally, gentlemen? Prove me wrong that this wasn't the craziest year, right? Oh, 100 percent. All those sick. points. I you got to You got to say that. Uh, that was very fun. I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, let's talk some all Australian. Oh, yes. We just mentioned this in the Yeah Nars about the squad. I still reckon first and second team seems fair. Very fun, yeah. But shall we go through the actual squad itself, gentlemen? Wow. Uh, we do already have like a uh, social clip uh, out about this, I believe. And the squad itself, <laughs> Leo's like, we do. Uh, but we, all, squad, we will, we will. The squad itself. So the two teams that don't have any players, Adelaide and Richmond. First off the uh, first cap off the rank. That's that pretty fair? funny. That's Adelaide. fair. Yeah, yeah, that is fair. Richmond bad. Adelaide not as bad, but, but no standouts. The only one is ranking, but he didn't. He make got the injured. Cut also off, right? missed a bunch. Yeah, so. He got injured. Yeah. All right, Brisbane. They have Harris Andrews, Joey Duckett, Joey Danaher, Lockie yeah. Neal, Cam Rayner, Danes. Okay. Uh, my beloved Blues, Paddy Cripps, Scrapper, Charlie, <laughs> Kono. Harry McFive. Harry Mackay. Yeah, he snuck in there. He kicked five a couple of times this year, Stats. Boy, that's how he did it. <laughs> and, of course, my beloved Jacob Weedering. Got a lot of time for Weeders. Uh, for the Pies, Darcy Cameron, which is one of the more contentious picks, Not but I actually I rate it. I rate yeah. it. Uh, and Nick Dacos. He's pretty good at football. He's all right. Zeret <laughs> makes it for Essendon. Uh, for the Fremantle Dockers, a team that missed the eight, they have five representatives on the squad. Most players of any team. Chaos. Absolute chaos. Andy Brayshaw, Jordan Clark. Luke Ryan, Caleb Sarong, Sarong, uh, Hayden Young. Do we reckon all five of them need to be in Clark, this Clark, Clark I actually need to don't be mind Clark. No. I don't think Brayshaw, though. I don't even. Yeah. I mean, I'm not wildly convinced on Brayshaw. Maybe right? Brayshaw or yeah. Clark, I'm taking Young that. was fantastic all year. Strong Young, Young Ryan, yeah. Sarong, beasts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the Cats, Jezza Cameron, Maxi Holmes, and Tyson Stengel. For the Gold Coast Suns, Noah at home Anderson. Uh, <laughs> yeah, is, he, is that going to say it on his, uh, his, uh, on his blazer? <laughs> if he makes it, it's like he should be at captain home. If he, <laughs> <laughs> captain at if home, it's captain. just at home. <laughs> Sam Collins, no stupid sexy Flanders. Yep. And uh, no Ben King. Uh, for GWS, Brent Daniels, Jesse Hogan, the Coleman medalist. Lockie Whitfield, sure. Yep. No Tom Green. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's very stiff. For the Hawks, Massimo D'Ambrosio, as I mentioned on uh, yesterday's, uh, yesterday's video. <laughs> Geez, you'd hate to be the team that just gave him away. Essendon will be absolutely filthy with that. No, but they wanted him, but only for a year. <laughs> yeah. All of them wanted him for three years. They didn't even play him. And one more him. just lasting boot in the guts from big brain genius Adrian Dodoro. Yeah, he's I love that. Dylan Moore. Nice. And James Sicily. <laughs> Sicily. He hates Tassie. He's Sicily. Uh, Maximus Aurelius Gornica's son of a beloved, <laughs> no, father. Husband to a beloved wife. <laughs> Father of a beloved son. Are you just saying, you're, you're just saying exactly. Like <laughs> uh, only so only one demon. Seems fair considering yeah. the injuries that sort of hit Lever, May, obviously Petrarca. All of was, was really bad. Uh, for the North Melbourne Kangaroos, Harry Cheezel Sheezel. Yes. Tristan Cherry. Well deserved. Don't mind that. Port Adelaide, Zach Butters, Kane Corns obviously had a vote in this one because Jason Hall <laughs> Francis. <laughs> nah, he deserves it. He should have made it. Dan Houston. Sure. 
Yep. Uh, for the Saints, Jack Sinclair. Okay. Interesting that uh, there's a couple of, like, Cal Wilkie, like, mm. a few other ones. That Even been... talking to Saints fans in the office, they said Sinclair was a lot better last year, and there's a few yep, other Saints definitely. players, including Marshall, that were, were a lot yeah, better. Yeah, Marshall so. missing out, obviously. Uh, the Swans, I think we've mentioned how they've got the four best nicknames on the yeah, Swans yes. as well. You've, yeah. got, you've got nicknames. Uh, the Lizard, Nick Blakey. Whoa, <laughs> we're all golden. Heen man, dun, 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 dun. Heen man, Isaac Heaney, and Chad Chondley Warner. The only uh, cool nickname missing from that Swans team is Cheeks. Cheeks, James yeah. Robottom. Yes. My good friend. Uh, and then out west for the Eagles, Jeremy McGovern. He I said it again. Jeremy <laughs> McGovern. I'll just Jeremy say it slower. <laughs> Jeremy. He's just having a stroke. That's yeah. uh, and the J Train. Right. Jakey Waterman oh, makes it. That's Amazing. a great comeback. For, uh, for the Dogs, Marcus Bontempelli, Bailey Dale, and Adam Trelaw. Okay. Gentlemen, did they get the squad correct? Overall, I'm not too I displeased. Think, yeah, I think overall this is the best they've done. I feel like everyone sort of concentrated in like the comment sections of all of our posts and other posts saying Rowan Marshall, whereas in other years you get lots of different players. Mm. I reckon a lot of people are arguing and every team has their sort of player. But other than Marshall, maybe Tom Green, I'm pretty happy with it. Everyone that I thought should be in there is, is in there. There's, I, yeah, I've got like – Other than Freo's There's probably Joe weird. Danaher and Harry Mackay. I'm just like, what are oh, we doing? Oh, actually, I forgot about Cam Rayner. Mm. I don't know about Cameron. Rainer was good at times though this year, and especially when Brisbane's like resurgence yeah. hit, he was like massive, the main part, massively a part of that, right? Mm. At the same time, like at the Gabba, Cam Rainer, mm. big thumbs up. Like first first eight rounds, yeah, I only had one game, two games over 20 touches, I only have, three goals in the first six weeks. I don't know about that. I have four changes to the squad. Oh, okay. I don't really care that much. Flanders, <laughs> Marshall, Green, Wilkie in, Brayshaw, Sinclair, Rainer, Danaher out. I could, I could get but that. But as I said, don't really care. Good job. It's just the squad anyway. Yeah. As long as the team is uh, picked correctly. Yeah. Nice one. All right. Well, the biggest snubs are probably Rowan Marshall, Tom yep. Green. 100%. Stupid Sexy Flanders. Outside of that, I'm pretty okay with that. Yep. I think there's a couple of switches that you can do. Do you want to debate this or do you just want to go through your teams? Um. I don't know. Go the team. <laughs> Let's well, do I'm, it. I'm sure we're going to debate it anyway. That's guys, all Australian team. All right, all right, all right. So we're starting fullback, Luke Ryan. What? <laughs> Everyone has him, I think. <laughs> Get him! <laughs> Jacob Wiedering, you'll like that one, Jim. Harris Andrews, and then halfback line, Lockie Whitfield. This is the hardest line, I think, to pick because there's so many halfbacks. Yep. Lockie Whitfield, Jeremy McGovern, Dane Zorko. I almost said Zane Dorko there. Um, <laughs> You're then a Zane <laughs> <laughs> Center line, uh, we've got Errol Goulden, Kripa in the middle, and then Massimo D'Ambrosio. I think, I don't know if they're going to pick the actual wingers. Pick, wingers. pick wingers. No, they're right. a big part of the game. Anyway, uh, half forward, Dylan Moore, Jeremy Cameron, Isaac Heaney. I've just snuck him in the half forward there so I can fit more midfielders. Full forward, Tyson Stengel, Jesse Hogan, and Charlie Kerno. Then we've got followers, Tristan Sherry, X-Man, uh, Marcus Bondapalli, Lockie Neal. Interchange, I'm going to go Adam Trelaw, Nick Dacos, Max Gorn. I just had to fit him in there. And then Harry Sheasel wraps up my team. Very interessante. I'm going Luke Ryan, back pocket. Oh, I hate it. Weedering, Blakey, Zorko, Andrews, and Houston off the halfback. Gordon, Sarong, Merritt. Warner, Jeremy Cameron, Bonten Pally as the half forward line. Daniels, Hogan, Moore, Dylan Moore, that is. Jerry, Heaney, and Cripps as the on ball slash ruck mm -hmm. trio. And then on the bench, Trelaw, Nick Dacos, Charlie Kerno, and D'Ambrosio. It's not bad. Stengel, um, very stiff. Stengel, Stengel he was the stiff. most goals of any small forward, so I think I've got to put him in there. Nice one. Uh, Luke Ryan, Jacob Wiedering, Harris Andrews. I love that back. Yeah, that's what I've got as well. That's yeah. so good. I like that. Nick Blakey, James Sicily. Maxi Sicily, Holmes. Sicily, really? Yep. Uh, He's going to different. Houston Jim. bounce back and stuff like that. I couldn't find a spot for him. Uh, Butters, Cripps, and Dacos. Butters. I love Butters. Okay. Ramsey Bolton himself. The Heen Man, Jesse Hogan, and Chad Chunley Warner on my half forward line. That's also like going a bit, a uh, couple of midfielders playing my half forward thanks. Nah, you're like, thanks I, did I did that. Uh, like that. And the forwards, Charlie, Jezza, and Stengel. Imagine if your forward had Charlie Connor in the pocket. That would be that nuts. Be. <laughs> uh, followers, Cherry, Bont, and Neil. Yeah, which I think might have been. Oh, no, I don't have mine. Neil. Ah, oh, what are you doing? Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Interchange: Golden, Zeret, Hayden Young, and the Cheese. You've got a very different team, I but don't have I think this is the most even. I uh, think all Australian we've had in a long time. There is an argument to be made for mm, the vast majority of this team, and yep. like, like I looked at Leo's, and I'm like, 
It's I can't bad, fault yeah. it. Like yeah. it's mm. fine. Like you can but also very, just did you bring? Else. You didn't pick wingman, did you? you just picked, no, I just put incentives. Yeah, basically. I put Merritt on the. To wing, be fair, so. you could put Butters or Dagos on the wing, and they'd still kill exactly. Him. I guess that's true. Uh, not making it. JHF. Uh, D'Ambrosio. D'Ambrosio. I didn't have. I didn't have Houston. Uh, I had very few. Like outside of, I thought Harris Andrews had a great year. Mm. Uh, and like a weird sort of soft middle of the season, I think, but it was like awesome. Oh, you don't have McGovern. I think he's going to be in there. I think he's going to be in there. I don't have Whitfield. Sticky. Yeah, I didn't have Whitfield either. So yeah. this is like the thing. That half back line, as you said, half back. Well, oh, it's I think tough. we this... had completely different ones. I love yep. Max Holmes. I thought Sicily was really, really I just, good. I like Actually, Jim's ability... got three different ones to me, half back. I like the ability of the half backs I've chosen to defend a little bit more than what Whitfield does. <laughs> well, they're not playing an actual game, so we don't need to defend. Well, <laughs> it's got to be taken into consideration. They're half a, back. Let's play back. <laughs> this is why we should have a first and second team, then we'll make them play. Yeah, that would, oh, that would be good. The November spectacular. Come at the AFL. second team beat the It'd be awesome. That's like Australia. Pride is on the line. It's Australia Ray versus Australia in 1995. What a great time to be alive. Genuinely. All the all Australian selections should be put to shame. You could get Exactly. Who's Nathan Buckley? You don't know your ass from your elbow. What are you doing? They would get 90k at the G for a first and second All-Australian game. That As would I be said, sick. November spectacular. I'd, uh, I'd rather see State of Origin and best of... Yeah. Sure. But, yeah. All right. There you go. That's some good Australian... All-Australian chat. We will have the more sort of chatter about this sort of stuff on tomorrow's show, the Thursday show, where we will go through all the 10 teams that are basically... Done, well, obviously, Dunsky now... Uh, but we'll also be giving away our AFL Today Show awards for the year. Oh, that's uh, nice. Basically a big award show. Very exciting. Are wearing tuxes, gentlemen? You better be. Oh, we, we can if you Am want. Am I on it? No. Yeah, <laughs> you have go. to wear tux anyway. Oh, you have to bring me a tux. Gerald, yeah. if, I'll wear one if Gerald wears one. Gerald definitely has like three different types of <laughs> yeah, like tux t-shirts. Yeah, give, me one, give me one, Gerald. You got, I'll wear a tux t-shirt, t-shirt yeah. 100%. <laughs> All right, there you go. All Australia Chatter, let us know who you think missed out, mm-hmm. who was snubbed, who you want in. Put your team below in the comments. Go absolutely hammer and tongs. This All-Australian squad is rife for debate. I love it. Uh, but that'll do it for today, the Midweek Madness Show, the AFL Today Show. Uh, thank you to the Ding Guy for jumping on, the old stats guy over there. <laughs> the old. I'm older than you, I guess. <laughs> thank you. And social boy Leo. Oh, I thought you were going to call me young. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we will be – and thank you to Wally for jumping on yes, and Alex yep. as part yeah, of that Yeah, that was great, too. yeah. Uh, Wally was fantastic in that top five reasons this year was the craziest we've He's ever seen. He's very fun on camera, yeah. Uh, He's going to be on next week's show as well, where we're going to be talking up uh, the best things about finals. Top five things about finals, yeah. Which is awesome. Very, very fun. So remember to smash a like across all the socials to see us doing lots of fun stuff this week. We've got goals of the weeks of the year, marks of the weeks of the year. We've got some other fun stuff that's going to be coming out. We're going to be breaking down why every team can win the flag. Every team. But even the ones that didn't make it? Not the ones that didn't make it. All the ones in the finals. Okay, yeah, I I understand that one. So subscribe, star, and like all of our shows across, you know, all of your podcast apps and all that sort of stuff. The AFL Today Show, of course, which is this one. But the AFLW Today Show as well with Alex and Bryony. Uh, We've got Crick Today, Football Today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, which just came back yesterday. Uh, Hold all tickets will be back this week as well for your GGs. So get around them on Facey. IG, TikTok, X, and of course, YouTube. Jump in the comments. We will also be going live next Thursday night. Oh, really? For that Port Geelong game. Get excited. It's going to be awesome. So we'll be sitting in here, smashing a few spicy kombuchas, yelling at the telly. It's going to be very fun, so join us then. Get around all of it, like, I don't know, getting around Rowan Marshall's case if you're Nathan Buckley. What was that? He's just like, oh, no, he just wasn't that good. What are you talking about, you killed Nathan? it. Jeez, get around it like Michael Voss getting around Citizen's Address. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm just going to go arrest some dudes right now. Stats boy, look out. Let's All go. Right. Until tomorrow, we'll catch you later. This is the AFL Today Show. And remember, finals, finals, finals are back. Finals are back.